welcome everyone to a high performance computing uh, session on Google Cloud. Uh, my name is Bill Magro. I'm chief technologist for high performance computing at Intel. And I have the pleasure to have with me today Peter McShane from Apps Broker and Bill Nitzberg um, from Altair. Uh, they're in the corners and we'll be, um, we'll be working through uh, this together. So what we plan to cover today in the session is I'm going to talk about what Intel's doing to power HPC in the cloud through our CPUs. Uh, and our activities working closely with Google and with the ecosystem. Um, but that's not enough. And so we're going to transition then to Bill. And he's going to talk to you about how, you, how Altair is working to really make it easy to get access to HPC in the cloud by delivering appliances, essentially a PaaS layer and access to the applications that matter. Uh, and then finally, finally, Peter is going to tell you about a center of excellence that um, we've put together uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to come and experience HPC in the cloud uh, and do it with very low risk and low cost to, to understand how to take advantage of the value we're going to talk about today. So let's dive right in. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to just talk about our collaboration with Google. We have a long-standing, about 15-year collaboration uh, with Google. And it started with them providing feedback and helping us shape the features in our processors. Um, over the years, we've delivered six generations of custom CPUs to Google. Um, and they were, in fact, the first to offer our latest processor generation platform, Skylake, also known as the Xeon Scalable Processor family. Uh, so it's very exciting to have so much innovation in the cloud and the earliest access. Uh, and as you just heard in the keynote uh, and was announced recently, um, we're now going to be launching instances with Google uh, that actually use Intel's Optane data center memory, Optane DC, uh, to give very, very high capacity uh, at much lower cost for in-memory workloads that demand that. Uh, and so if you want to go over to Regine Skillern's uh, session, our, uh, hyper, our, our cloud computing GM, she's going to be talking a lot more about that in the next hour. Uh, look up the Intel session. So Intel Xeon processors are at the heart of the Google Cloud. Um, obviously, performance is foundational. And there's a lot that we've put into our latest generation Skylake to drive performance. I'll tell you about that later and show you some of the results. Uh, in terms of security, your data security is paramount. And Intel processors have things such as the AES and I instructions, which actually accelerate the encryption, decryption uh, calculations and computations that protect your data. That's an example of something that's in our CPUs and always advancing to give you high performance and high security. And finally, the virtualization features in our processors are really um, sitting underneath a lot of the capability of both the security and the flexibility and the agility that allows you to, to share, essentially, a common resource in the cloud and do it safely and securely. So clicking down a level into high performance computing, I'd like to talk about what HPC is first. Um, sometimes um, you talk to people and they're new to HPC. Sometimes they have very different definitions. At Intel, we think of HPC as an activity that really has three characteristics. The first one is the purpose of the calculation is actually to gain some insight. You're trying to learn something. There's an intellectual product. The second characteristic is it has to be a demanding workload. It's not low performance computing. This is high performance computing. Um, and the third characteristic, which I think is really important, is when you appropriately apply more resources to the problem, you actually get a more valuable result. So think of one of these examples uh, like weather forecasting. You could do a weather forecast on your phone, but you get a 12-hour forecast in maybe 30 days. That has zero value. But if you can run that thing in, um, in three hours and now determine that something's going to happen, you need to evacuate some people or change your plans, that can have tremendous uh, value, um, financial value and just personal value. And those examples, there are many of them across many fields um, that, that do high performance computing. And it may be surprising to you, but we think of data analytics and machine learning. A lot of that actually is a high performance computing workload. And if you apply that, those three tests, you'll see why. So why are people thinking about high performance com uh, the cloud for high performance computing? Some people think it's a bit of an oxymoron. You know, high performance computing is about supercomputers, right? Well, if you go to any supercomputing site, what you'll find is they have some very large applications and workloads that are driving the, the characteristics and the size of the machine. But they have many, many smaller workloads um, that, that could actually run somewhere else. So it's still HPC. Not every um, workload needs that machine, necessarily. Those machines, though, tend to be completely full, 100% utilization, and there's always a backlog. And as soon as the queue gets shorter, engineers, scientists, whoever's using that thing are putting more jobs in. So there's always this pent-up demand. And so one of the main reasons people are looking to the cloud is because some of their workloads can run well in the cloud, and they can manage those demand surges. Um, and by taking some of the workloads that, that maybe aren't demanding the on-premise resources and putting them in the cloud, they actually make their on-premise system even more valuable while it stays full. 
Um, there's also getting access to new technologies, like I mentioned, earliest access to Skylake in the cloud, uh, and also R&D collaboration. Think of teams all around the world. Rather than shipping data back and forth, we take advantage of the tremendous network that, that Google Cloud has uh, and enables people to collaborate much more easily than they've been able to in the past. So how do you decide what workloads should fit in the cloud? <clears throat> There's really two characteristics. The first one is, do you trust the cloud? And I would argue that in the past, people uh, felt that the cloud maybe wasn't as secure and as safe as keeping things at home. I think those perceptions are changing. Uh, some of the best security in the world is in the cloud. Um, so there's this, this boundary of public cloud that's rising as a result of that. In terms of technical characteristics, um, as I said, there's a wide range of, of workloads that run in HPC, and any of them could run on a dedicated HPC system or a supercomputer. But many of them, over on the left, where they don't necessarily need to scale as far. Um, they don't need as tight coupling for message passing, which is the predominant way uh, that high-performance computing applications run. Um, these are great fit. And so you see in industries like finance and genomics, that's where things start. Or in manufacturing, I show them on the boundary where some of the early uh, calculations to do design studies are done in the cloud, and final studies for noise vibration harshness, combustion, um, car crash simulation, and safety uh, are run still on a a traditional HPC system. So finding the right workloads is key, and putting those in the cloud. So behind HPC in the cloud and behind the Google Cloud, we have the Intel Xeon scalable processor family. This is our latest generation, codenamed Skylake. And we drove a lot of innovations into this processor specifically to meet the needs of high-performance computing workloads. Uh, they have very broad benefits, but HPC was one of the main drivers. Uh, an example is moving from the previous generation's ring architecture to connect the cores to a dual uh, two-dimensional mesh. Uh, there's also tremendous cache enhancements. The addition of AVX 512 instructions that allows us to do twice as many flops per clock tick, floating point operations. Um, we increased the memory bandwidth um, by, a gener by a factor of two over the previous generation. Um, and finally, we increased the number of cores uh, and the efficiency of, of um, hyper-threading. And as a result, people are able to run much more dense calculations on a single CPU. So you're seeing many more um, virtual machines, virtual CPUs inside of a VM now are possible. So where are these available? Uh, Google's been tremendously aggressive in getting these out. And so I think this slide is already out of date since we made it just a, a few weeks ago. Uh, there were 13 regions. Uh, Google is adding Skylake instances um, all around the world. So if you want to use these, all you have to do is say the minimum CPU and, and specify this family. In fact, Bill will talk about that a bit in his section. And you can get access to these and try out, out and see how well they do for your own workload. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. But I do want to show you some examples from some of our customers and what they're saying. Uh, I think Descartes Lab is a really interesting, interesting company. They're mining one petabyte of satellite imagery from NASA from the last 40 years uh, to look at what's going on and, and out of the satellite data, correlate it to the history of the food supply in the world and using it to predict crop yields. Right? This impacts the financial services markets. It impacts food security around the world. Uh, this is an application of high-performance computing, machine learning, and obviously very, very big data. Um, and they, just in this move to the latest generation, saw a 40% uptick almost in their performance. And you can see other examples where people are seeing almost 2x, uh, especially in the life sciences area, the biotech companies at the right. Um, so some, uh, Descartes is actually has a session tomorrow if you want to hear more about their experience and go, go look at it. So a, a lot of this performance does um, come to you quite naturally if you've modernized your code. Um, but I do want to put one caveat out there and say, if you haven't modernized your code, uh, you're just counting on the processor to make things faster, you may be missing out. So this is an example from financial services of a binomial tree options calculation. And you can see there's 130x performance difference um, over the seven years um, that comes from someone who actively optimized the code versus someone who didn't. So you need to thread your code. You need to vectorize your code. You need to work with the Intel compilers that unleash the performance of this, proce this processor. Um, otherwise, you could be leaving 100x performance on the table. Um, this, is a, this is a synthetic benchmark, but we see it in real applications as well. Uh, so it is work, um, but we have things to help you out with that. So what does Intel do to help you? Um, we're talking about modernizing your code. Well, the first thing we need to do is provide a development methodology for your high-performance computing applications that allows you to understand where you're leaving performance on the table. 
uh, and then go chase it down. So some things we recommend, the first one, out of this Parallel Studio XE is use optimized libraries. These have been hand-tuned for the latest processors. They're out there today, they're launched with the processor. So if you're using math libraries, you're getting the performance. Many, many applications in HPC do that. The second one is compile. Our compilers are updated well ahead of the release of a processor and allow you to actually um, update your application. It'll still run on previous generations, but it'll be optimized for the new generation, be ready to go when it comes out. Um, we have analysis tools, again, that point you to not only where you're leaving performance on the table, but also um, tell you how you can extract that performance by making recommendations around vectorization, recommendations around threading, and even projecting for you the type of performance that you could get, our advisor tool. Um, and finally, our VTune tool shows you the results of your, of your analysis and whether or not you got the performance you expected, and if not, why not, um, by using the hardware counters that exist and our processors and some very advanced analysis techniques. Uh, and finally, performance is nothing if your application isn't correct. And anyone who's done parallel programming knows that um, multi-threading, vectorization, um, if you do them incorrectly, you can get the wrong results. So we have a whole suite of tools that analyze and will help you find uh, those types of problems automatically, which are tremendous um, productivity boosters. So this is exactly what we recommend for on-prem systems. It's exactly what you need to do in the cloud. Um, so we've put a lot of effort in with Google to make sure that these tools run and run well in the cloud. So please check out the Parallel Studio XE uh, if you're going to be running applications in the cloud that you write yourself. So the last thing I want to say before I hand it over to Bill is I've talked about CPUs. I've talked about the motivations. But there's, there's a big distance between coming up from the bottom and having the infrastructure interfaces that you get through Google Cloud and what HPC users and HPC applications expect coming from the top. And the link between those two worlds to make it possible for you to continue using your on-prem resources but put those same applications, perhaps with different input data sets in the cloud, is consistency. So Intel's been working with the industry for over a decade to document a standard cluster architecture. Uh, and it's been adopted very broadly. Um, Altair has been one of our great partners in this. And their appliances um, actually implement this and, as a result, are very compatible not only with their own applications but from applications across the industry. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Nitzberg, uh, who will take you through some of those usability things and making HPC work in the cloud. Thanks, Bill. Thank and, and now I get to say thanks, Bill. <laughs> um, let me just start by telling you uh, that I, I believe, we believe at Altair, that HPC improves people's lives. And, and you've heard from Bill about the different places. But when I think about high performance computing, I think about you know, making um, child safety seats safer, making airplanes lighter to save fuel, um, making you know, my, my cell phone not break when I drop it. It's, it's about making people's lives better. It's why I'm here. It's why I do what I do. It's why I really love working at Altair. And a tiny bit about Altair, we're kind of unique in that I'm going to talk about the middleware layer, which is trying to make HPC more accessible and more easy. That's PBS works, and I'm going to talk about that. That's where I live in Altair. But Altair also has two other groups um, that are actually bigger than mine. Um, one makes applications, physics applications, that actually do high performance computing. So the folks who are actually designing you know, a new outside of a phone or something, or a new car bumper or something, will use those applications. And then we actually have a team of people around the world, hundreds of people around the world, who are just engineers actually using these tools, using our middleware, doing stuff. It's, it's this fantastic feedback loop. Uh, we have openings if you want to, never mind. Um, so <laughs> PBS Works is really software um, for high performance computing that makes high performance computing sort of more natural, more easy. And I'll, I'll give you a couple examples, and I have a couple videos. So we focus on making things sort of easier for administrators and managers to control high performance computing, and that's both um, giving visibility about what's going on, but also sort of setting things up doing all the, you know, the nitty-gritty that you have to do, um, connecting to clusters, but also sort of connecting up into, into a cloud or actually just running in the cloud. I'll say more about that. Um, but we also focus on making things easier for actual engineers and researchers when they're using stuff. And um, I'll show you what the vision looks like for that. Um, and then finally, we have, and that's sort of Altair Access, this is the name of the tool. And then we have a tool called PBS Pro, which I won't really talk about, which optimizes stuff once it actually gets there. Um, tiny bit more about control. So control is the uh, control center the, the, uh, that, that we put in front of. It's a GUI. It's a web-based GUI for HPC administrators that lets you 
um, sort of a single pane of glass that lets you configure, deploy, monitor, handles bursting for you, um, to connecting your private HPC uh, supercomputer up, up to something like Google Cloud. Um, gives you real-time monitoring, reporting. Um, really nice feature that we've added uh, is a workload simulator. Um, and I don't have a demo of this, so I'll just say it. Uh, you can actually take, so one of the problems in high performance computing is these are really complicated systems. Even if you're using, even if you're all cloud, it's a, it's a complicated infrastructure with a complicated workload. And if you want to optimize exactly what you're using and how you're using it, uh, it's nice to be able to say, hey, here's what I did last quarter. Um, could you tell me if I changed a few things around? If I switched to, you know, if I used a larger memory nodes, what, you know, how fast would things have got done? Would we have had faster turnaround? And so we have a simulator built in that lets you ask and answer that question and then cloud bursting. Um, on the access side, um, we really have been trying to reimagine what engineers do. So I'm a geek. I'm a nerd. And so I live in command line. I'm happy to install Linux, although I haven't done it in many years. But I'm happy to, really. Um, I, and what we found, though, is, is that's great at the very, very high end. Um, people really know what they're doing. They're experts. But if you want to take high performance computing, which, by the way, my definition of high performance computing is, is taking computing up to the absolute maximum performance level you can, um, not quite you know, just to where it almost doesn't work, but right up to the edge. So, so performance is paramount. And so at that level, you have a lot of really smart people. They don't mind doing a lot of stuff. But if you want to make that available to other people down lower, um, what we found is that the engineers of today <laughs> are not as happy um, doing all the nitty gritty stuff. And in fact, if you can give an interface, uh, this is crazy. I, I don't believe it, but I actually believe it. I, I, that sounds crazy. Um, if you can give an interface that requires zero Linux shell um, or zero little bits about IT, you can actually attract like 100 times more people um, in, in terms of just learning curve. So if you can get nobody to have to type LS or CP, <laughs> you actually get this huge extra set of people. And so that's our vision. And let me just show you what PBS Access, uh, the, the vision for PBS Access, and I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, I should introduce this. It's just a Windows, this is a Windows desktop of how you might actually access um, Google, Com platform, Google Compute Platform running a high performance computing application. Um, and the, the video is really a, a, a day in life, well, 58 seconds in the life of an engineer to run a high performance application. OK, so that we're going to have to do from here, I think. Let's see what we got. Mm. Wow, I don't know how to play the video. Do we? Mm. Any got? No. OK, we're going to go to YouTube, apparently. But I don't have that screen. Ah, there we go. Wait. I'm going to do this. It's going to mess everything up. We're going to start it from the beginning. <laughs> OK, regular desktop. Uh, I'm a regular engineer. Uh, usually, I just have my files in front of me. I'm right-clicking on a file. It actually gives me this new option, Process With, which basically means run some high-performance computing. I'm going to pick Optistruct, which is a structural en engineering optimization code. That's it. That right-click is everything I need to do. You can see in the upper right, it's actually uploading some files off to the high-performance computing system or cloud. It's actually submitting a job for me automatically. Um, the little file icon actually says, hey, stuff was uploading. And hopefully, um, by the time I finish this sentence, that little file icon will say everything is now downloaded. Nope. OK. Mm, OK, job has completed. <laughs> and uh, uh, it will automatically bring those files back. So what did I not do? I didn't log in anywhere. I didn't type any shell. I didn't do anything. And we're actually doing some Google I.O. And I don't know how to get back to this. Uh, can we go back here? No. Uh, hey, wait, wait. The which? On your browser, the middle tab. Ah. Hey, hey. OK. Thank you. There's going to be two videos. Sorry. Uh, awesome. Um, so the vision is basically, effectively, nearly invisible high performance computing. So that's going to actually attract a huge quantity of more people who don't have access to high performance computing. And that lets you get to your local, local system or cloud. Um, at Altair, like I said, we have this broad range of applications. And one of the things that you want to do in high-performance computing is you want to perform as fast as possible. Um, so 
Uh, these are physics applications that do the work. Um, as an, and one of the nice things about our partnership with Intel, we get you know, access to Intel processors, and we can actually do sorts of uh, neat tests. Uh, and we did one of those tests um, with Radios uh, crash code um, and found that actually it runs 1.8 times faster on Intel Skylake. Um, and just there's two examples I'll give of how you can actually choose Intel Skylake because you know if you want to get performance, if you're doing high performance computing, you want to. So one is uh, when you're creating uh, an instance on Google Cloud, you can just pick the uh, you can just pick I want Skylake, and for that you're going to actually get Skylake. You'll get this 1.8 times faster. Um, but how do you actually get you know most high performance computing today is actually done in private systems on supercomputers. Um, and, and even though <laughs> it's the most leading edge, sort of newest work that people are working on, the organizations are a little slow to adopt things. So most of the work actually still happens in-house on private clusters. Um, and we're just connecting the cloud. And the way that we're connecting the cloud is through cloud bursting, if you haven't heard it before. All that means is building a hybrid system. A lot of work's happening locally. Uh, when you have specific work that fits, you actually create an instance on the cloud to run that local work. Um, and with the PBS Works tools, we make that really seamless. Um, and let me show you, I'm going to skip this slide in the interest of time here. Let me show you how that's done. And I'll just show the, 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 um, the second video, which I'm going to have trouble with, which is why I'm skipping a slide. So this is the last video I have. Uh, and let me see if I can do this by clicking on the right-hand side here. Let's see if this just works. Ha, it works. Um, so with, with PBS Works, we actually uh, let you build an appliance on the cloud with a few clicks. So this is the interface inside of PBS Cloud IO, which is the software as a service version of PBS Control. You just say, hey, I want to build an appliance. Um, say a few things about what you want. Um, you pick Google Comp Compute Platform, because we're here. Um, uh, you can pick the region where you want to run. Um, and then actually for the appliance, in this case, we're building a, a, a HyperWorks appliance. You'll actually pick the kinds of instances you want. And here, I'm actually picking a 96 CPU instance, so that'll get me Skylake. Um, we automatically fill in uh, for you uh, all of the crazy stuff you need um, in order to actually do the system administration stuff. You can, of course, change it because you have to, and that's it. Um, the beautiful interface I showed you on the Windows desktop um, also is available as a web interface. Um, it's just as beautiful, but maybe not as simple, <laughs> because uh, but if you want to submit a job through the web instead of through the desktop, uh, more or less the same thing. You pick the application you want. You say, here's the file I want. Uh, fill in uh, any kind of not defaults that, uh, that, that don't, sorry, any, anything that's not defaulted, uh, and click Submit. Um, you can actually get a lot more access through the web about what's happening if you need to. Um, yeah, um, so you can actually find out what's going on. You can check the files as they're, local, as they're running on the Supercomputing Center. You can check the files, actually, if you've bursted the cloud. You can actually see the files of the running job while it's there. Um, you can get all sorts of job attributes. Um, perhaps one of the, the very neat things that you can do um, through this interface, I don't know my timing perfect, is you can also do um, remote visualization which means you can take something like a Chromebook here with no memory, uh, and you can submit a job, uh, a graphics job, that's going to use, say, you know, uh, 256 gigabytes of memory and all sorts of huge, powerful stuff. And you can say, please run this job in the cloud, um, but I want you to stream the bits back, to my, uh, back in my browser um, so that I can actually do the work no matter where I am. Um, and it's as simple as sort of while I was talking, what you saw there. You just say, here's what I want to run. I want to run on the cloud. We do all the orchestration behind the scenes. We set everything up. Um, and you can run huge and fantastic large, yeah, sorry about that, bicyclist, uh, fa fantastic large uh, simulations, um, even, from your, you know, even from a really small device. Uh, and with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to um, the next speaker, Peter. Thank you. <coughs> Come on, let's give Bill a big round of applause. There's some exciting technology we're seeing here, folks. <laughs> Who would have thought a year ago we could even do some of the things that we're doing that is possible that Bill Magro was talking about in terms of HPC? Some of the orchestration tools um, that Bill from Altair has been telling us in terms of orchestration are incredible. But I'm here to ask a question and help see how we can answer that, which is, given all this amazing technology, 
why is so little of it still being used? Less than 10% of this great tech cloud technology is being used at the moment by people that require HPC. And I have a personal interest in this as well, in that once upon a time, I was doing a lot of electromagnetic linear induction research. And one of my biggest frustrations was waiting. And how in today's environment can we afford to wait? And that's something that we really need to solve and really need to solve quickly. I think there's a lot of business people in the audience that don't really realize what's possible. And that's what we want to we wanna help enable. So I'm Peter McShane. Um, good morning, everybody. I represent a, a company called Apps Broker. And before we help answer that question, let's tell you a bit more about Apps Broker. Apps Broker is an extraordinary organization. We are the biggest Google practice in Europe. The biggest. We've got 150 staff spread across the UK, spread across Romania. And um, unusually, we also have um, what we call customer experience offices in France, in the Alps. And we own our own island where we do customer collaboration and team building. So we do things differently. So differently that if you wanted to spot an apps broker person, just look for people wearing these red jackets. Because we were told it was cold in San Francisco. <laughs> Man, we are sweating. So um, yeah, very easy to spot. And, and just to give you a sense of what apps broker is all about is for the, some of those who were listening to the solution selling workshop, where we're doing things differently in financial services is you know, we're helping apply regulation or helping banks uh, enable sort of MIFID regulation and opening up all sorts of new data sources they didn't know existed. We're doing similar things in retail, in supply chain optimization in the retail space. But one of the things that we're really excited about is all this infrastructure that Bill Magro is talking about. How do we start creating real-time innovation? How do we start getting results now? And that's why one of the things that we've, we've, we're doing now is we've just partnered. We set up a partnership with Intel and Google to form what we call the Extreme Cloud Center of Excellence. Now, this is an amazing facility with three pioneering organizations in cloud coming together to try and answer that question that we talked about earlier. Firstly, you know, delivering something that is not just cheaper, but faster and also way easier to consume. Cheaper because Google Cloud is currently offering the lowest TCO in terms of changing what is normally in supercompute a big CapEx expense into an OpEx expense with some of the greatest technology from Intel. I mean, without a doubt, Intel's Xeon scalable technology is some of the best in the industry at the moment. But what they're doing as well is Bill talked about Parallel Studio and some of the maths kernel libraries as well. These are really making it a bit easier to use. But where we're putting the wrapping on that is trying to bring people into this, people in terms of apps broker experts that have been working with Google for 12 years on implementing Google Platform. So we understand Google, but leveraging the best of Intel and Google resources as well. Now, why is that important? Because one of the reasons why a lot of the change isn't happening is because it's about creating business awareness. Business leaders don't know what's possible. It's also around creating technical awareness, helping people understand what performance is really possible, people that typically have their own platforms. And also, it's very much around creating a change in culture as well, one where people are thinking about using new features all the time and not standalone static systems. So we talked earlier about extreme cloud. Bill mentioned you know, the use cases in, in a number of industries. And yes, right now, using the Google Cloud Platform for big companies means you can do far more processing, far more analysis, far more simulations. You can get really good insights at very low cost. The challenge that we're hearing from a lot of customers, though, is, well, if we start adopting the cloud, how are we going to have a roadmap of innovation? And, and that's something that Google's answering with the Intel relationship. You heard today or yesterday about the um, Apache Pass um, feature set that's been put onto the Intel platform. And there's many, many more things coming. And what's great about Google is they're adopting that quickly. So that's a big tick. The second thing, though, we're hearing from customers is, this is great, but what about security? Because despite the fact that Google's whole cloud platform was built with security 
you know, as part of the DNA, people don't really know how to use it properly. A lot of them have system administrators that haven't really had the experience of deploying it scaled in cloud yet. A lot of them don't know how to do sandboxing. Um, and a lot of them are also concerned about latencies because some of them have very constrained systems where the infrastructure needs to be pretty close to the data. So that's why we set up Echo. Echo is a physical facility. The first one we've got is in the UK. We're planning to put dots all over the map. And what it's doing is allowing organizations to really get a sense of the power of the Google Cloud platform in terms of HPC. Now, how we're doing that is we're not just providing access to Google Cloud and people. What we're doing is real hybrid performance benchmarking. What that means is we've got a facility with an in-house Intel um, on-premise platform as well as a Google Cloud. So customers can start seeing which workloads make sense to put on the cloud and which workloads make sense to leave on-prem. Because we're not saying that Google Cloud right now is the answer to all the workloads. There are some workloads that are very, or many workloads that are very sensitive that have to be run on on-prem systems. But this, this offers an opportunity to really start testing that in different environments. What we also have is, is um, partnerships with some of the specialized ISVs. So we talked about uh, Altair. And, and if you can uh, wander down to uh, Moscone West to the um, uh, where, where the Intel stand is, we're actually showing some of the work we're doing with Intel and, sorry, with Altair and PBS there. And how can we start optimizing the orchestration? How can we start doing it across several different applications? What you also get with, with the Echo environment is direct access to some of the key staff in Apps Broker, Google, and Intel who are constantly looking at some of the new feature sets um, and really start enabling a, a sort of a hybrid cloud environment, start doing real sa sandboxing. One of the cool things as well is wherever we're learning, we're turning those into tools. So in terms of orchestration, we're looking at how we start doing consistent deployment of VMs and containers at scale, which enables this. We're also looking at tools for cost management as well. Because one of the things that customers are concerned about when moving into the cloud is how do I contain the cost? How does this not get out of control? It's great that I'm innovating at speed, but how do I avoid this getting out of control? And that's the value that we're providing as part of the Echo environment. Now, in order to, to, to realize scale, one of the things we recognize is that you need to have a proof of concept initially. And we call our proof of concept process three steps to extraordinary. Now, what this does is helps both business leaders and technical, and technical folk and organizations get a sense of what the business case is, get a sense of what the benchmark is, what the performance is, and what and also what the roadmap should look like for your organization. So as part of that, we've established what we call the Apps Broker Blueprint, which really helps work with you to get a sense of exactly how your HPC is performing at the moment. And from that, moving that into a workshop environment within the Echo environment, where we can start doing some optioneering. Start not just doing whiteboards in terms of what workload should go in, the right, in which place, what kind of orchestration is possible, but actually testing that real time. So now you have an opportunity within a lab environment to start sandboxing properly across both on-prem and off-prem. Start trying different types of orchestration. And the results of these three steps to extraordinary process is effectively a business case, which gives you the cost benefits, gives you the performance benefits, which workloads perform, which don't, and also gives you a roadmap. Now, that's pretty critical for customers. And in fact, somebody that we're working with live right now is European Hedge Fund. There is an immense demand in buy-side financial services in terms of quants to start taking advantage of Google Cloud. And a massive demand. But one of the challenges that they keep on facing is, well, how do we make this secure? How do we start actually using the capacity in the right way for different types of workloads? You've got quants that are doing algorithms on significant amounts of external data, significant amounts of internal data who currently are constrained to, I mean, constrained to develop new algorithms or are constrained because the algorithms take too long to run on systems. This means millions of dollars, millions of dollars for these organizations. And so what we're doing is working with, with one of the larger head funds to, to look at, firstly, setting up a hybrid data setup. So mimicking what they need in the future, which is probably in a bit of an on-premise as well as a, a cloud platform, start establishing provisioning, helping them to start provisioning at scale, both on-prem and off-prem, helping to do setups and teardowns as quickly as possible. 
Also, reproduce the third-party environments. Bring the ISVs into the mix. You know, in the same way we talked about Altair and, and crash testing, we're going to do the same in the quant space. Bring everybody into the environment. Because we don't know all the answers, but if we bring everybody in, we're going to get the right answers. And one of the things that we're looking as well with this particular fund is how, you know, with a workload manager, you can start allocating workloads between different types of environment. And what's exciting is that the moment people start recognizing the potential, is they start looking at some of the other Google products, such as TensorFlow and Cloud AI, and look at, well, hey, we can use these to create whole new models. This is the exciting thing about when people start culturally recognizing the art of the possible through this echo environment. And one of the other things that we've, we've helped the hedge fund organizations is we showed them our cost control dashboard, which really takes a view of what your likely spend might be and starts notifying and messaging um, people in terms of you know, when, when things may run out. So it gives you control over that spend as well. So in summary, I think you know, we're at an inflection point. All this technology that Bill and Bill spoke about earlier is fantastic, but it's really usable now. And I think coming back to the question I answered, asked at the beginning of the um, presentation is, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting to innovate? If you're running a design business, if you need insights, why are you waiting? The time is now. And certainly, if you can make your way down to the um, Intel stand in Moscone West, we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to see how we could potentially do a proof of concept with your organization and start making this real. Thank you very much.